Hi. That's it. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Kenny Wong. I'm an ex-member uh, of uh, uh, Chinatown uh, Bayard Street Faction Ghost Shadow. Uh, today, I'm going to share my, uh, my experience and my life story uh, uh, during the time uh, when I'm on the street. That's good. I think that, that's good. You ready? And try, I would say, try not to touch the microphone. Don't touch it? Yeah, it's like moving, though. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready to go? Okay. Um. Kenny, so where are you from originally? I'm originally from uh, Hong Kong. Um, my family immigrated here when I was two years old from, uh, from Hong Kong, came here to the uh, United States, New York. And um, let me see, um, I believe it's 1971, yeah, uh, that we uh, uh, landed here in, in New York. And um, it was me, my younger sister, and my, uh, my parents, uh, the four of us. Came here. Uh, my father probably uh, thought that we could have a better life, you know. Um, and yeah, that was when when we uh, immigrated to the United States. Describe your childhood, Kenny. My childhood was pretty decent. Um, my my mom works in a factory, a uh, garment factory, typical Chinese uh, uh, immigrant uh, in in New York City. Um, my dad was. Uh, Beginning, he was a hardworking man. A man, uh, he did uh, construction trade, uh, electrical. He did a lot of uh, uh, the older restaurants in uh, Chinatown. He, he did works for, uh, uh, electrical work for uh, like Civil Palace, mm -hmm. uh, Jin Fang, you know, the bigger restaurants uh, back back in the old days. And then eventually, um, he started uh, mingling uh, with the uh, with the tongs, uh, with the gangs and. I guess he wanted uh, more than just a uh, uh, blue collar worker. And then he uh, elevated himself to uh, become a businessman. Uh, start doing import export. Uh, but his main thing was, uh, was doing underground gambling. Hmm. Um, he started up uh, Ching Song Wei. It was um, uh, a bunch of people that band together, uh, combined their capital, and they opened up a gambling house. It was pretty lucrative back in the days. Mm. Uh, so he made a chunk of his money uh, to gambling, and uh, but he also lost it all. He was a compulsive gambler. Mm. Couldn't, he doesn't know when to stop. And um, then when he uh, got a little bit more uh, famous uh, in Chinatown, uh, the underworld, he started uh, hanging around with uh, the ghost shadows. Um, mm. Uh, he started, uh, he, operate, he opened up a gambling house on Baxter Street. Um, that was when, right, right across the street from uh, the tombs, uh, before there was to uh, the tombs. Yes. It was just a flat piece of uh, 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 African uh, land. So um, there was a lot of people that was, uh, started, uh, a lot of different gangs uh, were, were extorting him uh, during that time. He didn't want to deal with it. And um, one day he went, he was, like I said, he was pretty close with uh, the ghost shadows. So uh, he uh, contacted uh, Kitsai. Uh, Kitsai during that time was the Dilo of uh, the ghost shadow. And uh, I guess he, him and uh, Kitsai went into uh, cooperation uh, and became partners uh, for, for that uh, gambling joint. And they made a lot of money there. You know? um, I believe uh, I was probably like around six years old. That was the first time I, uh, that I uh, uh, had contacts with uh, the Chinatown uh, gangs. Uh, especially the ghost shadows, because uh, during the during operation times, uh, the gambling house, um, he couldn't pick me up from school. I I, I used to go to uh, PS 130 on Baxter Street, so uh, he would have kids. I have one of his underlings, uh, uh, Bradley Joe. You probably heard of him, BJ, uh, to come and pick me up from school um, and uh, bring me to the to the so-called uh, uh, office in the front, uh, gambling joint in the back. Um, so. I know BJ. You know BJ? Yeah. Yeah. So, describe Chinatown back in those days. Chinatown was exciting. To me, it was exciting because um, I live in Brooklyn. 
uh, Brooklyn and uh, um, Gravesend area, Ships at Bay. It was really nothing there uh, during that time. Uh, nothing for Asian people, for Chinese. So whenever on the weekends or after school, I, you know, we're, we're in Chinatown, we get to eat good food. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, the younger members of the Ghost Shadow that, you know, I was just a kid, you know, and, you know, they play with me. I enjoy uh, ha uh, having them buy me gifts, uh, bring me to, uh, uh, to buy candy, food, toy, uh, ice cream, you know. So it, to me, it was fun. Now, but my mother hated that scene. My mother is just a regular housewife. Uh, but because of my father, um, had business deals with, uh, in Chinatown um, with the ghost shadows, uh, we were always uh, uh, you know, surrounded by them. You know, always uh, on Mott Street, Bayard Street, you know, hanging around with them, you know, uh, going to uh, dinner with them. So that was basically uh, how it was when, 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 when my father was still alive and um, hanging around with uh, the, the ghost shadow members. Did you know they were a gang? I didn't know nothing about You didn't gangs. know nothing. I was, I was just five, six years old. Right. You know? um, as I grew older, I understand what they were. Um, but I always looked up to them like they were uncles. You know, you know how Chinese tradition is. Uh, anybody that's older than you, uh, that are friends with your, your parents, so we, were, uh, we have to call them uncles, aunts, or whatever. Uh, to me, they were just uh, another uncle, you know, uh, family friend. That's it. Did you see anything back then that, like, you know, that made you, that surprised you in any way? Like something, maybe something violent, maybe something else as a kid? There was one incident. Um, when I, while I was at going to school, when I, was, I was probably like around seven, eight years old, um, seven years old uh, at uh, PS 130. So I was being bullied by this uh, big, fat Chinese kid. Um, got into a fight with him, and uh, my face got scratched up. So when I went home, I went to the office, my, my dad saw it, asked me what happened, I said I got into a fight with somebody. So the next day, uh, my dad took a couple of uh, uh, ghost shadow members with him and went to the school to pick me up and made me point out uh, which, which kid you had a fight with, and he, uh, uh, zoomed in on uh, the, the, the dad that was picking up the fat kid, and uh, they went up and messed up the, the father and said, that, yo, your, your son was uh, messing with my kid. So instead of uh, teaching me not to fight, uh, uh, discipline me, they went and fucking uh, did the opposite and went uh, um, and beat up the father uh, for, for not controlling his own son. You, you know? seen that happen? I saw it in my eyes. I was like, fuck. I went home to tell my mom. My mom yelled the shit out of my dad. I said, what the fuck? Why, you, why would you uh, uh, bring the shadows there and, uh, and, 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 uh, and done that to, to, to the other kid's uh, you know, uh, dad? I mean, you should discipline your own son. But my dad, because I was the only son, uh, my dad never disciplined me. Never. Uh, no matter what the hell I did. Um, as bad as I was, I was pretty spoiled. Um, I used to... Uh, uh, light up firecrackers inside the car, uh, scared the shit out of my mom, burnt my mom, uh, my dad's uh, freaking uh, jacket, and all my dad did was just laugh, laughed it off and said, you know, okay, don't do it again. But he never disciplined me, never even raised his voice on me. Mm. Yeah. How, how did that make you feel after you saw that happen in front of your face? It, I didn't really feel nothing about it. Um, did it give you some sort of power, like a sense of power? Not really. I didn't even understand that part. You didn't understand? I didn't understand that. I was too young, six, seven years old. How would you understand uh, that that type of violence, that type of uh, uh, will bring you power? Right. Um, I didn't really understand it, and I didn't really think too much of it. Um, I was a little bit afraid that my mom would find out because my mom was di would discipline me, would beat the shit out of me, you know. <coughs> uh, I was afraid that my mom would find out. Um, but eventually, uh, my mom found out anyway, you know, and and yelled the shit out of my mom, uh, my dad, you know, for for doing that, and mm. and, and not um, um, discipline me. Instead, you know, 
uh, freaking show me how it's supposed to be done on your, in your world, you know? So did you have, your relationship with your father was, it was good? It was very good. I idolized him. To me, he was, he was the one and only divine being to me, you know? Um, he brought me happiness. Yeah, um, he paraded me around Chinatown like I'm a freaking trophy, you know? Uh, um, he bought me things that he spoiled me with uh, toys, whatever I want. Um, if, my, if I did something bad, uh, my mom would freaking start yelling or, or, or want to discipline me. My dad would stop her from doing it, you know, protect me from it. Um, I remember one time I, uh, I think I hurt one of my younger sisters by accident. Uh, played with them rough and didn't know my own strength. Uh, my sister was crying. My mom uh, uh, was chasing me around with the, you know, the, that, that freaking guy, uh, so around the house. And my dad heard it from downstairs uh, once he walked in the building and ran up the uh, four flights and, 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 and rushed into the, 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 the house to stop my mom and said, yo, don't touch my son. Hmm. Uh, no matter what he did, leave him alone. Don't touch him. You can't discipline him. So it, it made my mom even more hangry. <laughs> mm. yeah. I saw that uh, something ended up happening to your father. Yeah, um, when I was 10 years old, um, there was a hit put out on him. Um, how it led to that hit, uh, I'll probably explain it later on, but uh, there was uh, one night in 1980, um, I still remember the date, February 13th. It was a Friday. We were having dinner. Um, now, my father, no matter w what he does outside in the, in the streets, uh, outside in, in Chinatown, he always make it back home for dinner. That, that was a tradition for him. Um, he, he likes to spend time with uh, me and my sisters and, and my mom. Um, that's the only time that, that, that he really uh, actually spends uh, uh, a, a certain amount of time with, with us. Uh, and, and right after dinner, he got a call uh, from uh, his nightclub in, um, in Chinatown. It was Thong Fong Ye Zhong Wei. It's uh, that messed up building, um, that, that, that corner building at, uh, I believe, Center Street, Center and Canal. On mm -hmm. the second floor, was, it used to be a nightclub with, uh, you know, the PR nightclub. So he, he, he owned that. Um, so one of the workers called him and told him that uh, the front door can't be shut, the glass is broken. Uh, can you come down and uh, you know fix it? He didn't want to go out because it was starting to snow uh, uh, that night. But because the worker kept on insisting that yo you need to come out and fix the door uh, uh, or we can't close up or close shop or whatever, so he went out and that was the last time I seen him. Right. Um, what I heard afterwards is that his car got tampered with. Um, while he was about to leave, and he couldn't start, uh, uh, he couldn't drive away. Um, while he was fixing, uh, repairing whatever he has to repair on his car, uh, somebody drove by right in front of him, walked up to him, and uh, uh, called out his name. He turned around, and and they shot him. They shot him five times. Hmm. Yeah. And that was pretty. Uh, it was very dramatic uh, to me, because. Um, I idolize him as like, like he was God, um, nobody above him. And for that to happen to a 10 year old kid, it was devastating. And I, I believe during that time, after, I mean, my whole personality changed. It just destroyed the good side of me. Hmm. Um, and it filled my, uh, my head with hate. Hmm. Uh, let's put it this way, I go to a park and if I see a a father and son having a good time, I would wish them dead. I, w I would say to myself, I wish these fucking people would die. Why would they have so much fun? Why, why they took away my father and I can't have that type of happiness with my father? Mm. Um, it destroyed me. But most of all, it destroyed my, uh, my mom. Mm. My mom was young. She was only 30 years old uh, when my dad passed away. And for her to lose her husband um, at that age, and probably two to three years later, she, uh, she lost her son. 
I became very uh, disconnected with her. Um, I just didn't want to be near anybody. But uh, most of all, all I wanted to do was find out why. Why did they take my dad away from me? Why did they kill him? So that was my life goal uh, during that time, that all I wanted to do was to find out the, what happened. Yeah. Um, what, what role did your father play? Oh, let me ask this again. What role did your father play in the ghost shadows? I wouldn't say that he was a ghost shadow. Um, he was partners with kids. He's on certain uh, uh, rackets like the gambling. Um, uh, he's more of a Chinatown businessman. And the messed up thing was that he didn't belong to any Tang. Mm. I, a lot of people even said to me afterwards, I mean, if your dad was uh, associated or joined uh, one of the Tongs, he would have been protected. But uh, he was not a Tong member at all. He wasn't hip sing, he wasn't online. So um, he was unprotected. And I believe that he did some shady stuff um, with the ghost shadows that probably got him um, uh, the angry uh, certain people and they put out a hit on him. You know? what, so after seeing that um, and experiencing that with your father, what made you want to join the game? I just want to find out. Like I said, um, we heard my, I mean, I was young. Um, even though I was young, I heard uh, from my, my mom and, and her brothers uh, uh, talking about you know, how, how my father died, what happened. So I basically understood the, that it had something to do with the, the flying dragons. Um, like I said, everything was being speculated. No, there was no hard evidence of uh, pointed fingers or, or, or you know, even, a, even the NYPD that was on the case, it was a, it's still a cold case. Um, so, but that, those rumors were good enough to tell me that I'm not joining no fucking flying dragon. They're, they're the ones uh, involved in killing my father uh, in one way or another. Um, my best bet was to join the ghost shadows since my dad was so cl uh, close to uh, um, to uh, the dialogues during that time. Um, my best bet was to join them and eventually uh, crawl my way in and, 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 and uh, snoop around and try to find out uh, what led to my, my dad's death, you know? Um, so sort of way you were, you joined to kind of avenge your father's death in a way? First, I want to find out. Uh, I want to be in that world first. Uh, in order for me to find out, I have to be in that world. Um, um, my easiest access was to join a ghost shadow. Since uh, I have friends, uh, brothers that were ghost shadow, uh, kids, I was a ghost shadow. Um, they know me as my father's son. Uh, a lot of the younger ones already knew because some of them took care of me uh, when I was, you know, when I was, uh, um, during that time when they had the gambling uh, house in, in Baxter Street. So I wanted to go join the, get into that world and eventually find out who killed my father, what was the reason, and if I had the chance, I would you know, have my revenge. You know? um, one way or another, I want to subside this freaking hate. I, I need to get, get, get this, uh, this question mark out of my head. I, I need to find out. Um, I need to find out who was behind it. The person that killed it was just a tool. I knew that from the beginning. He, he was ordered hit. I can't hate him for it. I can only hate the person that, that ordered it, uh, the hit. I, I need to find out who that person is. I, I want to take him out myself. I want to strangle him, torture him, whichever way I can. I need him to, I need him to die in front of my face. You know? um, but after all these years, I, I, I still don't have concrete evidence. Um, there's only speculations. Nobody actually knew what really went down. Yeah. Hmm. 
So how did you go about joining the Go Shadows? In the beginning, I, uh, I was just, what, 13, 14 years old. Uh, Kichai was still around. He was the dialog during that time. Um, every time I would go down to Chinatown uh, to hang out with his, uh, his kids, they, Kichai will find out. He will have his uh, guys uh, grab me and you know, chase me back to uh, Brooklyn, uh, drive me back to school and make sure that I'm not on the street. Every time I show up my face, uh, he, will, he will make a uh, couple of those guys responsible. If you see this kid and he's down here, it's your responsibility to get them out of here. That's, that's, that's your job. So I couldn't really uh, hang with them. Uh, I, I could only uh, hang out in Brooklyn with, uh, uh, with my friends, with uh, the, the Ghost Shadows younger brothers, you know. Uh, so we band together and we name ourselves Ghost Shadows in Brooklyn during that time. I uh, also hanged out with a lot of folk chings uh, that was in Brooklyn. Um, and uh, after uh, 84, when, uh, when my uncle in the 25 got indicted, and got locked up by the feds, uh, I felt sad that they, uh, they got rounded up by the feds, they got locked up. Um, but I saw that as an as a opportunity. Oh, now it's my time to go and join. Hmm. Um, there was still some hardship jo- trying to join a gang during that time. Um, right after they got locked up, BJ and, and some other guys took over and they still don't want me around. So I was still hanging around in Brooklyn until 86, 87. Um, and then um, I was with uh, Big Steve from Bayard Street uh, that used to uh, follow uh, Applehead. Um, I had an opportunity to work with him, uh, under him. And uh, there was an incident that we were supposed, I was supposed to uh, deliver uh, goods uh, that night. But uh, Steve saw me in the clubhouse with a girl and, um, and, and told me uh, that, you know, let, told me to stay, he'll, he'll take care of it, you know, I owe him. But when he went, he never came back, he got locked up uh, by the cops. So eventually, uh, uh, Robin told us what happened, because um, during that time, Robin was a dilo. Uh, told me what happened to Steve. Uh, Listen, if, uh, if you want to stay, you can follow me from now on because Steve is like my brother. Uh, so the few of us that was following uh, Steve uh, from Brooklyn, um, he talked to us one by one and asked if we want to stay. Um, I was the only one that, that, that wanted to stay because I, that was an opportunity for me to uh, be in uh, Chinatown now. You know? So um, from that, that day on, I, I followed uh, Robin. I was uh, Robin's... Uh, um, in the beginning, I would say Aaron Boy, because um, I was young. I was one of the, I was the youngest uh, out of the whole crew. Um, and then eventually, as uh, it elevated to, I was doing everything for him. Um, I was delivering drugs, uh, picking up money, um, uh, doing certain uh, deeds for him, you know, um, roughing some, some people up, uh, um, um, running the operations of, uh, of uh, certain gambling, uh, 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 um, the Mahjong places, yeah. And yeah, that was, uh, that was the beginning of my, uh, in 87, that was the beginning of my ghost shadow uh, life, yeah, on the streets. Wow. I, I heard so much about Robin. I never met him. Um, what, what was Robin like? To me, he's a very respectable person. Um, the way he carries himself is a um, clean cut person. Um, he doesn't do shady things in, in well, out in the open he doesn't, you know. Uh, we know about it, right? Um, he's good to his people. He's very good to me. I can't say a bad thing about him uh, um, until the shit that happened uh, when we got rounded up. I, to me, he was like a, a brother I never had, an older brother I never had. He took care of me. Um, yeah, I was doing things for him. Um, um, I was running certain uh, operations, like if we need to freaking, you know, uh, beat up some people, rough up some people, uh, uh, do, a, do a robbery, uh, 
certain certain hustle, I will run it for him, and and he will reward me very handsomely. I mean, uh, the first year that I was with him on my birthday, he gave me a freaking uh, baby roll uh, um, that that was probably like around twenty grand, right? Um, my pocket always had money because of him, uh, but like I said, I, I worked directly with or for him. Right. So um, it was a good thing and it was a bad thing because I was the youngest and I was the late, uh, the last to join him um, during that time. Um, certain guys were pretty jealous. Like, yeah. You know, what the I fuck? Was just you, about you, what, yeah. What yeah. the fuck? You got the opportunity, but later on they accepted it, so they started calling me Robinson. Mm. Robin's son, you know. Um, um, I didn't mind, you know. Um, Did I, Robin uh, know your father? He didn't. He heard about my father, but he doesn't know my father. Mm. He didn't even know who I was. Um, there was an incident that uh, kids, right, uh, when he was locked up in the feds, he, he called out to Robin. Um, I was actually at Robin's house during that time. Um, I believe I was feeding his dog. Um, and Robin's, uh, Robin was, uh, was out in uh, one of the gambling houses, and I was feeding his dog, and, I, and the phone rang, I answered the phone, and it was Kitsai. Once I picked up the phone, he, you know, I don't really know that was Kitsai. I was like, and he asked me, Kitsai asked me, who are you? And I didn't say nothing. Uh, I just said, oh, Robin's not here. I'll, have, uh, I'll tell him that you called. <coughs> and I hanged up on him. So Kitsai was pretty pissed. Uh, he's like, who the fuck? Uh, hung up their phone on me, right? So the next time, uh, I, I told Robin about it, and then I think uh, the next day, Robin, uh, 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 kids I called uh, again, and Robin picked up, and, and um, first thing he asked, who the fuck was that? You know, who hanged up on me? And, and uh, Robin told him, oh, it was just one of the Lang Jais. Didn't tell him who, who I was. And, well, actually, Robin didn't even know who I was until later on. So um, Kitsai's wife, Ida, um, during that time, she still uh, comes down to the street and hang out. Um, she is friends with uh, Robin's uh, girl during that time, uh, Tina. So they, a whole bunch of them uh, grew up together and they hang out together. Um, but every time she, uh, she comes down to the street after work, she will you know, target me and she will pick on me. She will make fun of me and she will come to me. Uh, pinch my face and say, hey, uh, I'm going to tell Uncle Kit tonight, you, you're in trouble, right? Mm. When he calls out. And I, I try to beg her, uh, don't tell him, don't let him know. And eventually uh, she told Tina, Tina told Robin, Robin found out uh, that I was, uh, my, my father was so close to uh, uh, Kit Zai and, and um, he was kind of scared <laughs> at mm. that time. He was like, fuck. Now I gotta fucking answer the kids I if he calls out, and eventually, uh, you know, he uh, he coughed it up uh, when we, me and Robin, took uh, his son to Terra Hut to visit him, um, and and um, first thing he said, I'm sorry, I really didn't know that was that that's that's uh, Peter's son. I didn't know, you know, and and uh, kids I freaking chewed him out, you know, I promise his dad that I will keep him off the streets, now he's, now he's fucking out of all gang, he joins our gang. Wow. You know? And uh, Robin explained to him, I can't do nothing, this kid is fucking, he has his own brain, what, what do you want me to do? Fucking kick him out, you know, can't kick him out, you know? And he's, and especially that Robin, you know, really enjoys yeah. you know, having me around. He um, took you in? Uh, yeah, he took me in and I do a lot of stuff for him. Right. That, that, Normally, a lot of people couldn't do. You know? Right. No. How violent were the gangs back then? Oh, pretty violent. I would say uh, almost every night there's a shooting. Mm. Um, every other day, uh, front page of uh, Sing Tao newspaper, there was a fucking uh, gang violence, uh, Chinatown uh, shooting, somebody got killed, somebody got hurt, somebody got shot. Um, things were pretty rough in the beginning because um, all the gangs didn't start making their money until a little bit later, like around 1988, 80, at the end of 87 and 88. That's when the heroin trade started hitting. Um, and uh, that's but when... But before the heroin trade, it was very violent. It was very violent. 
I didn't like you, I could st give you a fucking stare, you don't like it, uh, we bump, uh, bump heads with rival gangs, especially with us and the Flying Dragons. Um, you know about it, you know. Uh, uh, and we'll start fighting. If we have guns, we draw guns. If we have knives, we draw knives. Uh, but most of the time, uh, because it happened during daytime, it's basically a uh, uh, fist fight. Uh, if it's nighttime, and, and if we could get away with it while we're carrying, we're gonna pull out and shoot, shoot at each other. Why, could you explain that a little bit? Why in daytime and nighttime? What, what daytime, a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of time when we're, during the day, um, we don't carry. Um, Why? I hide because of cops, uh, mm. they're all around. Um, there's uh, undercovers uh, roaming around the streets. Uh, they drive uh, uh, relentlessly all around just just to freaking stop us and, and search us uh, for weapons. So we hide our guns in uh, a lot of uh, buildings uh, that we have mailbox. Yeah. So you, you know about it, you know? You, you're one of us, you know? You yeah, know where but we're they don't know about shit. it, yeah. so. <laughs> so. So a lot of our buildings, we have our mailboxes that we, we keep uh, uh, one or two of them, right? That we hide our guns there. A lot of restaurants, we, uh, we hide them inside the, uh, on top of the freaking, uh, the, uh, suspended ceilings in the in the, uh, in the bathrooms, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe uh, behind uh, the counters right. uh, of of the cashier, where we you know we talk to the owner. You know we're gonna keep like our like wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What what was the most violent gang back then? Most violent gang gang. Um, I couldn't say us no more. Um, all the flying dragons or anybody else uh, that was a Chinese uh, gang. I will say the BTK was. Uh, the Canal Boys. Where, how old were you when they came into Chinatown? I was like around 19. You, so you were in a, you were in a, like, you were in the mix already. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you describe that? How was that? Like when, when the influx of the Vietnamese came and that whole, um, that whole, you know, era. Um, you know, some of them came from us. Uh, came from, um, uh, there was an older guy named Mao Jai, right? Um, he, had, he had a couple of Vietnamese that followed him. And, um, and a lot of young kids too back then. So I believe that they don't feel like that they got the respect that they deserve from us. Um, they weren't um, being hooked up with a certain hustle. So they were being left out. Um, they don't have money. Uh, they weren't treated right. So they uh, ran off and formed their own gang. So they but were a part of Ghost Shadow? Some of them. Some I won't say a lot. I, I, will, I will say a few of them. I, mm. um, there were some, a lot of Vietnamese too in, in the Mott Street uh, uh, fraction uh, after Kitsai. So, um, but they, at the beginning, they, they didn't really bother us that much. Um, they were really messing up. They were menace to other, other gangs. Um, I'm pretty sure they know that we, we weren't gonna stand by and let them fuck around with us and, and not you know, have uh, any uh, repercussions for them. Um, but slowly, a lot of uh, these kids start roaming wild. We have uh, massage parlors. We have uh, gambling joints outside of uh, Chinatown too. Um, we have uh, other business establishments that we have outside of Chinatown. So they start uh, messing with, uh, with, with those establishments and, and our operation are outside outskirts of China, and it disrupted us. Mm. So they're stepping on our toes now. So, so every time they come, they they would you know, they were still in the beginning they were still roam freely and uh, on Mott Street, but then after a while we uh, uh, the word came down from the hierarchies uh, the Dalo uh, told us you know get them off. They're not allowed on Mott Street and Bayard Street uh, in, in our turf. So we, at the beginning, we tell them, hey, nicely, get the fuck off, you can't hang around here no more. Um, and eventually, they, they don't listen. And uh, the more they come, the more we beat the shit out of them. Um, at first, it was all, uh, it was just beatings. And then, um, when they started getting rowdy, we shoot at them to, you know, let them know, uh, um, this, yo, know, go for real, don't fucking come down, all right? And, uh, and the major beef that we had uh, was only one incident uh, in the beginning, uh, well, in, uh, at the end, was uh, the Wendy's Bar shooting. 
mm. one of my close friends, uh, Kung Zai, uh, he man and uh, Duck yeah. Sing. Yes. So these two guys uh, with Rob, Robert, uh, Robert's younger brother, uh, they were walking in, uh, down to Winnie's bar. So when they hit Bayard and Mulberry, they run into two Vietnamese kids. And they did their deed. They had to run them off. So they beat the shit out of them. Um, and they chased them out of the street. Um, I don't know why they chased them out of the street and they still fucking roam around, uh, uh, walking to the bar and, and thinking that they could have a good time. Um, uh, they should have heightened their alert, uh, uh, and be alert you know, of their surroundings. Now maybe somebody, what, you thinking that, that they're not gonna come back and fucking retaliate? And that was the mistake. They thought they, uh, they weren't gonna come back, but they came back with uh, guns. Hmm. And, they, and they walked in and uh, they shot Kern Jai first. Kern Jai was sitting at the, the, head, uh, the front of the bar. Uh, he was holding a 38. He didn't even have a chance to pull out and he got shot in the freaking head. Uh, uh, in the heart. Uh, um, that ended him. And then Duck Singh had the other piece. He jumped up from one of the, the booth and uh, pulled out, but he, he didn't fire the shot and he got fucking nailed in the head. Wow. Um, um, so that created uh, a major beef between us and the BTK. But during that time, it w basically the whole freaking Chinatown, all the Chinese uh, our gangs were, were had it up to air uh, next up with uh, with uh, BTK already. Uh, everybody was at war with them. You know? Because they were, they were disrupting what was... Uh, they were disrupting the, the normal operations of right. how, how Chinatown runs, uh, gangs run things. Right? Right. Um, they weren't being uh, respectful. Uh, they were robbing old ladies, uh, uh, going into stores, uh, jewelry shops. Uh, um, also, they did something that was freaking uncalled for. They bombed the goddamn fucking uh, van um, from the, the police van from uh, Fifth Precinct. Right. They, they started challenging uh, the police. Uh, so that created a lot of freaking uh, attention, unwanted attention by the government. And, and a lot of uh, things that we were doing in the street had to be in Hulk because you know cops were all over the place uh, all the time. Um, so they disrupted the everyday lives of, uh, of a gang in Chinatown, and, and, and nobody was happy. Uh, they were picking fights uh, with everybody. They, were, they had shootouts with other different gangs, and eventually everybody uh, uh, had it up to there with them, and they just went after them. Yeah. Were you, uh, you were involved with that then? Um, I, right after, uh, Duxing and Kern, I that shooting in uh, Winnie's, uh, not long after that, I uh, did a robbery and I got picked up by the state. Mm. And I did 18 months during that time in the state. So uh, there was an incident at the cemetery when uh, Migo, one of the, the, the right. uh, leaders of uh, the, the Canal Boys got gunned down. So there was a shooting at the cemetery uh, during his funeral. Uh, I heard about it when I was in jail. Um, while I was doing my time. So not long after I heard that, uh, I finished up my time, I got released. Uh, that's when I found out um, little bits of uh, stories here and there uh, combined together that, um, especially for one of my uh, closest uh, uh, brothers, uh, Tony, that told me, hey, um, uh, we uh, had people uh, come up from Dallas uh, to do the, the shooting. Um, Robin said that one way or another, we have to, you know, salvage our fucking face because of uh, um, what happened uh, with uh, Winnie's bar. Um, we can't do it ourselves because we were under fucking microscope by, uh, by, by the cops. They were always around uh, our street. Um, so they, we couldn't make a move at all. Um, the best way to do it was to hire outside help to mm. do our deed. And I guess that was a statement to let the BTK uh, or the Canal Boys know that um, we're not pussies. You know? I believe if I was around, I, I wasn't in jail that time, um, I mean, Robin would have probably sent me to fucking uh, do something. You know? hmm. Yeah, I, 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 prob uh, me, I was probably uh, going to be the one at, uh, to uh, do something uh, to retaliate.
how did the gangs make money back in the days? Mm. Besides the heroin trade, uh, the drug trade, um, for us, um, it was basically uh, the store um, collection on our turf um, and the gambling houses, uh, salary and uh, the, the percentage that we uh, take in uh, from the gambling, uh, gambling joints, uh, the Mahjong places, because Mott Street and Bear Street uh, is the most lucrative uh, streets in Chinatown. That's the yeah, center of- Yeah, the most of, busiest. Uh, yeah, the busiest. Um, uh, and we had the most uh, uh, gambling places. Um, so we operate those, we collect, we loan money, we collect money, we protect the place, and we also have a cut from uh, each gambling house. Uh, that was uh, the majority of our money. Um, back then, uh, I had four Cherry Masters. It's like a slot machine right. that I put up in the uh, gambling houses. Gambling houses, yep. yeah. So the people that play uh, that play the machines, uh, those machines were actually the workers mm -hmm. that on their free time, on their break, they would dump a lot of money in there. <clears throat> I'll tell you how much uh, I make each machine on an average week, uh, we'll probably rake in like around two, uh, two to four thousand. So if you you multiply that by four machines, that's pretty. You know, that's like around sixteen grand. Right. But we Back have to split days. with the with the person that supplies us with the machine, mm -hmm. the technician, and the house. Right. And we get like around uh, forty to fifty percent out of the machine, and um, uh, I will say like around uh, eight thousand a week. And I would split it with, uh, I would give it to Robin, Robin would give me half, you know? Um, that was a pretty good uh, <laughs> chump change, you right. say. Why did the, um, why did the upper, the upper echelon didn't want the heroin to come into Chinatown? There's, there's a rule. Um, ever since the day I was, the first day I, 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 um, I started uh, hanging around Chinatown. Where you eat, you don't shit. You don't draw attention in Chinatown, just because it's our home base. That's where we live, that's where we eat, that's where we operate. Now, uh, gambling and other, other you know, uh, minor uh, uh, rackets that we have, we're able to do it down, down in the streets. But don't bring drugs in the street, uh, onto our, uh, our street, and draw attention. Um, you don't want to, we don't want to turn it into like freaking Lower East Side street dealing. Uh, um, it's still a very, uh, Chinatown is still a very respectable place where families uh, come, uh, uh, come down during the evening time or weekend time to, you know, have dinner. Um, and, and there's a lot of tourists, you know, that comes to uh, Chinatown. So we don't want, want it to turn into uh, like, you know, freaking uh, Lower East Side uh, uh, street dealing. Um, and especially the Tongans don't like it like that. I mean, I, uh, the Tong, the Tong Association, they got members that fucking deal drugs too. Right. right. But uh, they, you won't find them fucking having drugs in in, in China. Right. Um, the only time that we had drugs in China was when I was there. Um, that I actually, uh, I was, uh, I was holding down a warehouse. Um, there was a big shipment. Uh, you know those instant uh, noodle uh, boxes, those cases. There was probably like around 15 or 20 pieces of uh, heroin in there. And uh, I was supposed to guard it. And I got it until uh, uh, Robin gives me a call and say, hey, uh, so-and-so is coming to pick up one piece, uh, give him one piece. And I will guard it with a freaking Mac-10 and a freaking nine millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, and they just give me two guns and uh, uh, nobody is to go up. Nobody, I can't contact nobody during that time. Uh, if somebody calls me, uh, beefs me, don't answer. Um, um, he will tell the other members that I'm, I'm not around, I'm, I'm working. Um, so they already know not to bother me. Uh, so the only contact I had during that time was with Robin. Robin would uh, give me a, give me a beep, you know, beeper, uh, pager. And I will uh, return his page and, and he will tell me um, uh, uh, somebody's coming up, you know who it is, uh, just give him one brick. All right, and, and that's it. Uh, only let him in. Uh, be careful who you, how, uh, when you open the door, make sure you know it's him before you open up. And, and I was uh, uh, guarding the, the goods. Yeah. 
How did Chinatown change once um, the heroin came into play? Oh, lots of money. Um, how much see, money? You see how, okay, dealers starting, start, uh, start to come down, uh, drive down the street with uh, expensive cars, Porsches, fucking Benz, uh, Jaguars. Uh, um, there was one guy with a freaking uh, Ferrari too back then. Um, they started freaking, the dealers become flamboyant, right? Uh, you see their wristwatches. Um, Peugeot, fucking goddamn uh, uh, 300 grand fucking watch. I wanted to chop his hand off, you know, I wanted that watch. I'm like, damn, that's a fucking nice watch. Uh, they, weren't, they weren't even contained to freaking Rolexes no more, mm. right? They want the really expensive shit. I'm talking about uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. The uh, APs. Yes, yes. Really fucking nice pieces. Um, big ass gold chains, diamond rings, uh, and they will freaking gamble like there's uh, that that like they fucking own the goddamn bank. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, they would, you know, those uh, those red freaking chips that they had. They will stack them this fucking high. Uh, the white ones were supposed to be fucking a uh, a thousand. Uh, and the, um, so it was supposed to be a hundred. The red ones were supposed to be a hundred. Um, the white ones supposed to be uh, five hundred, right? But they changed it to thousands. The red ones uh, uh, were uh, a thousand, and uh, the, the white ones were five thousand. So that's how they fucking uh, bet on, wow. on 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 each end. So the money exchanged in the gambling houses, you could see right away that you know how um, how lucrative that fucking deal was. Uh, the the everybody was a. Uh, 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 had a lot of money. And a lot of times the way they tip, um, they used to tip like around, you know, um, um, 100, 200. No, they'd be fucking, hit, they'd be hitting us over with fucking a grand, uh, wow. two grands, you know, at the height of that time. I remember I went to, um, there was a convention in, in Taj Mahal, right? So everybody went, I was supposed to be, uh, I was, uh, uh, my, I was supposed to station with uh, this guy named Dodo Uzi. Right, I go. So him and his wife, I was supposed to, you know, uh, uh, bodyguard him. I wasn't a fucking bodyguard. I was just a fucking scrawny fucking little kid. But I carry his fucking uh, his uh, his duffel bag. He had a big fucking LV duffel bag, all full of fucking money. Mm. Right, and I would just follow him around uh, while he was in uh, in the casino. Uh, when he didn't need me, he would send me away. And then when he need me, he would give me a, a page, and I would go, you know. Uh, carry his bag again. So, uh, at the end of uh, that trip, he fucking threw me two rows. That was wow. like fucking 20 grand right there. Damn. Yeah. And I said, well, what's this for? I, I, I didn't know. I was just a fucking kid. He said, oh, that's for you. Thank you. I was like, oh, thank you, Jigo. <laughs> fucking 20 grand right there. Two fucking fat rows. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. So, did the violence go down after the money started coming in? Oh, like that? yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody was about business. Uh, nobody wants any unwanted attention from the cops or don't want to uh, disrupt the trade, uh, the operations. Everybody was doing good. Uh, there was no bickering, no fighting um, between the gangs. It, it seems like there was peace during that time. Everybody was eating. Yeah, everybody had a, had a nice piece of pie, you know? Yeah. Um, in one of your interviews, on Chinatown gang stories, uh, you mentioned my father. Um, did you did you know my father? Um, I, during your father's time, I was just a young kid. Right. Like I said, I was one of the youngest uh, from the Ghost Shadow. Even though I was uh, Robin's right hand man, right? Um, never had any dealings with him. I met him a couple times. I saw him a couple times uh, right. in in uh, one of the nightclubs in Hollywood in in Queens. Um, but I'm too young for him to notice. I, right. I was nothing to him. Right. right. Yeah. Could you describe um, what you saw or what you heard about him to me? He was a big man. He was uh, Chung Tao's uh, number one guy. Mm -hmm. you know? um, he was considered as a Tai Lo of the Flying Dragons. Right? He run things when, when Chung Tao was, the, well, Chung Tao was never really around. Um, he don't hang out in the streets like we do, you know. But your dad does. He's he's always around with the with the, the his underlings, right? Um, so we 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 know who who he is. We know that you know not to touch him. 
know, um, there was uh, peace between us during that time, and they did their thing, we did our thing. Um, but like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not noticeable to you that. I'm, I'm just a little kid from the ghost shadows. He, uh, matter of fact, he might never even know uh, if I was a ghost shadow or not. He didn't really care, probably. You know? Right. Yeah. But uh, he was the big man. Uh, besides Chung Tao, he was the, he was, uh, he was uh, the person uh, that, that hold things down in Flying Dragons, with the Flying Dragons. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, how about, uh, uh, how about, how about Chung Tao? Did you, I mean, of course, you were young. But um, what was your, what was, uh, what did you know about him? Uh, okay, with Chong Tao, what I know about him was, was while I was in Brooklyn, because uh, his wife, Ale, Ale yeah, Jie, his, uh, uh, his, uh, her brothers and sisters, younger brother and sister, Steve and, and Lily yeah. and Debbie, I, I, we grew up together in Brooklyn. Uh, we live in the same neighborhood. Um, the only thing I know about him when, we were, uh, when I was a kid was that um, he, he used to go, uh, during daytime, he used to go back to Brooklyn to sleep at, uh, at the father's house. And we would sneak into, uh, back in the house, and, and once we, his door was not closed, uh, his bedroom door, and we saw a stack of money there. Mm. So me and Steve, uh, little Steve, would freaking sneak a couple bills out of, that, <laughs> out of his stack, and, and and once we once we get uh, once we escape without figure being noticed, uh, we would run down to uh, uh, Korean town in the city. Wow. Uh, we would go freaking uh, play games at Penn Station all night and uh, uh, go eat Korean food, you know. And that's how uh, that's what I know about him. Um, until later on, when I was in the street, um, um, he was uh, the Dai of the Flying Dragons. Uh, sometimes uh, even on our street on Bayard Street, his his mom lives uh, in one of the buildings on, on, on Bayard. He will, come, he will just walk down um, and nobody will touch him because Robin already said that, listen, if you ever see Chong Tao, let everybody know nobody is to touch him because he's coming down to the street because he, he, he's going to see his mom. All right, wow. so, so everybody leave him alone. So there was that respect. Yeah, I mean, Dalo, between the dialogues, it's supposed to be like that. Right. All right, um, especially when there was no war going on. Um, and, and you have to give each other the respect. Mm. <laughs> um, how did you end up in prison? Um, first time it was, uh, it was uh, the arm robbery. I did arm robbery uh, with uh, one of the massage places that, that belonged to um, uh, the Flying Dragons, yeah. uh, West 4. Right. Um, they called the uh, Red Rose. Uh, so I, I heard there's a stash of money there, like 80 to 100 grand cash. Mm. It's like, damn, that's fucking good change, you know? So me and some guys went, hit it, but we got caught, in the, uh, caught up in there. Uh, the cops surrounded the building and eventually locked me up. I did 18 months there. Came back out and then... Um, um, you did 18 months? 18 months, yeah. Well, you did 18 months and you bailed out? No, 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 18 months state time. That, that, that was my first... First time, first, yeah, first, first time. offense, yeah. Were you, you were on Rikers Island? I was at Rikers Island for a little bit, and then uh, I was sent upstate, uh, upstate New York. Uh, I had my head shaved and everything, yeah. How was Rikers Island at that time? Um, I was in C-74. It was pretty fucking rough. Right. Um, people say that's, a, that's a, gl a gladiator ring. No, that's a school where you learn to become a fucking gladiator. Uh, wait until you go upstate. That's, a fucking, uh, that's the gladiator ring. Right. Uh, the school was in Rikers Island, and the, the real gladiator ring is uh, upstate New York. Uh, every day there's a fucking lockdown. In in Rikers Island. No, up, uh, Rikers Island, yes, but right. uh, but more so in uh, in uh, upstate New York. Upstate. Uh, especially in uh, uh, the penitentiaries. Right. Yeah. And where, where did you go? I went to downstate. I was at downstate for a while. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then I went to Elmira because I had uh, Wiley crime. Uh, right. Security level was high. Uh, while I was in Elmira, um, shit, I was there with Ryan. Fucking right. the Flying Dragon, uh, Ryan. Yeah. I was yeah. there with Ryan. Um, and uh, I was there for, I think, uh, six months. And they shipped me up to uh, 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 Marcy. Hmm. Uh, it was a medium. But even in the medium, it was fucking rough. Yeah. Um, gangs, even, uh, it wasn't cells, it was all dorms. But 
different crews of different gangs, blacks, Hispanics, yo, they'd be roughing it up. They'd be stabbing the shit out of each other. Every day, there's a fucking lockdown. How was it like um, on Rikers Island when you were there, like in terms of being Asian? Were there other Asian people there? Like how many Asian people were there? And how, how was your, uh, you know, how was your stay there? Um, I was in the, the adult side uh, because I was, uh, I was uh, 19 during that time when I got locked up, 19 or 20, right? Right. So uh, it wasn't much drama. Uh, the house gang is already established. Um, you respectfully ask for uh, slot time. Uh, they'll work your way up um, uh, for, uh, for telephone slot time. Um, but I heard some really fucked up stories over there. I never uh, got into, I mean, I got the respect that I deserve, I believe. I mind my own business. Um, I, the way I carry myself uh, pretty much uh, um, had my head up high, so um, I didn't disrespect anybody, so there was no reason for anybody to pick on me. Right. Yeah. Now, you, and then you ended up doing 10 years in, sta in, a, in the feds. Yes, that was later on. How, how was that? What, what did you get arrested for to go to the feds, and how was your stay in the feds? Um, it, was, uh, it was an indictment uh, in 93. Um, it was uh, federal racketeering uh, and uh, organized crime. So Re everything was, in, 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 it was included, uh, whatever. Uh, right. You have extortion, uh, money laundering, uh, freaking uh, uh, drug dealing, fucking homicide, everything, right? But in, in, in the federal, they don't, during that time, they didn't have uh, homicide. They had uh, conspiracy to murder. So that means even though you didn't take part of it, uh, you didn't do the shooting or whatever, if you heard about it, you know about it, and you you're didn't say nothing it. about it, you're part of it. Right? You're part of the conspiracy. So that was uh, the whole indictment, uh, a whole bunch of shit. Um, you're talking about the, the, the kill shooting, uh, the freaking East Broadway uh, uh, a gas station. Um, Everything, everything was involved. Um, the, the drugs, uh, the gambling houses that, that we have uh, that operated out of state too, you know. So once you cross state line, it's auto automatically federal, all right. So uh, I was part of that indictment. And um, luckily for me, uh, my lawyer found some fucking loophole. Uh, it was supposed to be freaking, uh, at first, uh, they gave me a cop out 30 years. I said, what the fuck did I do to deserve 30 years, right? Um, and then uh, later on, um, they seemed to kind of rush me to fucking cop out. They dropped it down to f uh, 15, right? I was like, damn, that seems like a fucking good deal, you know? I could do 15 years, right? I was just, what, 20, 22, 23 years old? Oh, I could do 15 years, right? Um, I'll, st I'll still be in my 30s when I get out. And then my lawyer freaking the one day uh, came to visit me in, uh, in MCC and told me, yo, we, uh, we found some loophole. They, they double jeopardy charging you on a lot of stuff that you already did uh, with the state. Um, and, and they boost your category up mm. to, uh, to a certain level. That's why they got 14, uh, uh, 15 years, right? We could lower this shit down and we could fight the PSI. And eventually I, they, they dropped it down. And I said uh, to, uh, to uh, eight years, I was like, fuck it. Let me, let me just fucking cop out right away. Um, now I was supposed to do uh, seven and some change uh, and, and get out, but I got into some uh, some problem in jail, uh, and they took a, took some good time off of me. So you gotta uh, do your time and earn your good time, right. and the good time comes later. And eventually, um, I came home like around 2001, right before uh, the summertime, right before the 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 World Trade Center came down. Wow. Yeah. What was it like in the feds? Got to mind your own business. Um, you don't fuck around with other people. Uh, mind your own business. Don't be nosy. Uh, stay with your own people. Uh, whatever people that you have uh, if, uh, the, during that time, uh, uh, stay. With, what I mean by stay with your own people is stay with your Chinese, Asian, um, and uh, try not to uh, fuck with. One second. <laughs> they going off right now. Did they calm down? Yeah. 
Ea pe haide. Yeah, we, yeah, grab your chair. We about to wrap it up. I just, um, you ready? Yeah. They, they calmed down? All right. So look, I'm gonna ask you again. Um, so, so how was it like in the feds? Um, the feds are pretty, uh, you're talking about jail, state, it's pretty vile. In the feds, um, it's pretty calm until something really big happens, all right? Um, normally, um, you do your time, you mind your own business, um, you don't fucking try to hustle somebody or, or let anybody hustle you, uh, stay with your own kind. Um, the most important thing, like I said, mind your own business. Um, don't start fucking dealing drugs inside jail. Um, and pretty much, um, you're okay. You just do your time. Um, um, try to learn something, because the day I walked into jail, I, I was still angry, but uh, right after I got sentenced, that was like not even uh, 16 months later, uh, after I got locked up, I, I got sentenced. Um, that was the day that fucking I, I woke up, I was like, shit, what am I gonna do when uh, my, after this, you know, after the jail, I gotta do something. Uh, I can't be doing what I you know, uh, do no more. Um, so I start learning stuff. I start reading books. I start uh, uh, taking a different type of trades, whatever they offer in there, and maybe I can learn something. Maybe I could be useful uh, later on in, uh, when I uh, go home. You know? mm. Did anything big happen when you was in there? Oh uh, yeah. Um, while I was in Oldersfield, there was a Fuk Chow uh, against uh, the blacks. For real. Um, it was over a microwave. Wow. <laughs> it was fucking awful. It was, the fights in, 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 in the units in, in, in jail, in the feds, were always over a fucking microwave. There's only two microwaves for fucking 200 people in there. Mm. Uh, and, and everybody wants, you know, the Chinese, they like to fucking cook. Right? Uh, they buy food from, uh, from the people that work in the kitchen, uh, the raw chicken, the raw uh, pork or whatever, uh, the vegetables, and they start cooking for their meal. And because of uh, language barrier, um, it, either side, or both sides were probably thinking uh, that you're disrespecting me, I'm disrespecting you, uh, why don't you get the fuck off the, the microwave, uh, why don't you hold the fuck off, you know? And it, it was a language barrier, but uh, um, disrespect started uh, when, when, when they're fighting, when, when they're arguing over uh, um, the microwave. And eventually it, uh, it escalated into uh, my unit, um, the Fokinese, uh against the blacks, and they got fucking hammered. And a lot of people asked, why couldn't, why didn't you guys help? I said it wasn't our fight. The, uh, because uh, there were, there was uh, other reasons too. Um, me and my boys were like, what the fuck? I mean, uh, a lot of times when, when, because they had a lot of people. The Fokinese got a lot. Right. Um, um, they're probably like around six to to one of us, six to seven to one of us. So you, you can imagine how much fucking ease were in there during that time. Um, we don't speak their language. Um, we try to help them because they don't speak, but we don't speak Mandarin also. Um, uh, there was uh, hardly any uh, good way to communicate with each other. Mm. And they always think that we're looking down on them because they have low self-esteem and they have animosity towards us too. Right. And um, Because a lot, a lot of Fukanese and Cantonese, there was a lot of... There was beef on the street too, right? Uh, in the beginning, no, but later on, I, I, I guess they did. Uh, but it, it all started in jail. Oh, yeah. Me. yeah, it all started in jail. They always think that we're looking down on them. Right. Um, they always have low self-esteem and they uh, created animosity towards us that, oh, you're our own people, but you don't fucking help us. How? You motherfuckers don't operate the same way. We try to tell you not to do certain things, but you fucking do it anyway, and you disrupt the normal operations of a jail, right? There's rules and, and, and certain things that, that, cause in federal prison, inmate runs the fucking house, runs the jail, mm -hmm. right? Um, they let you, the, the COs let you do what the fuck you wanna do, right? As long as you're not disruptive and you don't start any uh, bullshit. 
but they always create problems out of nowhere. Um, and then they started freaking, when they, when, when they get it, uh, started um, hitting a lot of numbers, like they have a lot of people, um, they start talking shit towards us. Right. right? I mean, we don't want to fucking fight them. I mean, it's going to look bad uh, to, to, to outsiders, you know. How does it look in a fucking uh, American prison when uh, uh, they, don't, they can't tell the difference of Fukinese Chinese and Cantonese yeah. Chinese? It looks stupid. So we, we avoid all those type of uh, conflicts with them. But sometimes they, they're a little bit pushy. And to be honest, when I saw that happen, I was kind of happy you know, that they, they got their fucking ass whooped by the blacks. Wow. Yeah. Um, No, Fukinese are Fukinese. I'm talking about the, the Fukinese, not the Fuk Ching. I'm talking about a lot of them are not even a fucking gang related. Yeah, a lot of them are not even gang related. Um, they, uh, yeah. No, I'm talking about Fuk Zhou people. Yeah, yeah the, the Fuk the Zhou province people, all right? Um, that came over from the fucking boat and, um, no, the ones that fucking still hold hands wearing fucking flip flops, uh, you know, in the streets. So they have, uh, they're pretty fucking uncivilized, let's put it this way. Um, and to us, they're kind of embarrassing. But we, we only, we only uh, talk about it among ourselves. We're not, right. not going to go to a fucking white guy, oh, they're fucking embarrassing, or a black guy, or whoever, outsider. We're not going to do that to our own people. So we, we contain it within our own. Uh, we don't like them. But if they ask for help, um, it's out. It's our duty as a Chinese to help them out, right? as much as we can, uh, to a certain point. But sometimes they just they just fucking difficult. Um, they're uneducated, so the way that they think uh, is 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 just you know. Um, let's put it this way: they think they're fucking entitled, right? right. Their entitlement uh, overwhelms us, and and sometimes it it just creates conflict. So we we separate ourselves, and then uh, as time goes by. Uh, the other population, the whites, the Hispanics, the whites, they know the difference between us and them. You know? right. So that's, and that uh, microwave incident, um, I was standing right in the center of it, but I never got hit by any, any one of the blacks. They scooped right, be, right behind me, right in front of me, and they jumped at the, 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 uh, the Fukinese kid. Right. You know? So uh, they pretty much know who's, who's who. You know? right. uh, they could tell who was. How long have you been home? Uh, since 2001. Wow. Yeah. So um, you've been you've been you've been good. No more no more arrests and stuff. Ah uh, yes. Uh, you, no no more arrests. You've been no, free. Yeah. Good. I uh, I'm 53 years old. Right. Um, I mean I moved away from New York City because I don't want drama. No doubt. Um. Sometimes I still have that anger inside of me, that fire. Um, I think I'm a little bit too old for that. Um, I don't want to be in jail. And, and being in New York, if one day somebody says something stupid or, or light my shit up, I might, I might do something uh, unspeakable, you know? I don't want to be like that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I just want a simple life, you know? Mm. A quiet, simple life, you know? You know live, Maybe uh, I'm fortunate enough to live out through my years uh, till I'm 75, you know? Uh, mm. Let's see what happens. You know, but like I said, I, I, I just don't wanna, I don't wanna hurt nobody no more. I don't want nobody to hurt me. You know? Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Any time for you, brother. It's a great story, man. Let me shake your hand, brother. Definitely. All right. How did you? How? What? Um. How did you realize that Mike was an officer? I had no idea. I just finished doing my bid. All right. It was 2003. Uh, I'm working as a construction worker. Right. I'm driving a construction van. Five o'clock in in the afternoon. I'm on Eighth Avenue, Chinatown, um, 58th Street. I'm double parked over there, waiting for one of my coworkers to grab me a fucking coffee. And I looked across the street, I said, damn, that fucking guy looks familiar. <laughs> and, I, and he's in one of those fucking tripods, you know, those uh, police tripods in, in uniform. And I, looked up, I said, Mike, Mike, oh boy. And he looked at me, he said, hey, Kenny. I was like, what the fuck, you're a cop now? 
So I got out of my van, I ran over and I fucking gave him a hug. I was shocked. I mean, the last time I, I saw him, I remembered, he's not a fucking cop, he's a fucking gangster, he's a folk ching, right? Right. So it, 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 it really fucking shocked me when I saw him. I, I mean, at the same time, I'm proud uh, that he was able to uh, escape our life, uh, our, our demise uh, of uh, jail, and, and he was doing good for himself. I mean, whatever reason, I, I, I just felt proud. I knew he wasn't a fucking cop when we, we knew each other when we were kids. He was only, what, 15, 16 years old, right? right? So uh, uh, I was really proud. I was happy for him. I, I, I had no other uh, uh, initial thoughts, but, but my, well, actually my second thought is that I should keep my distance away from him. Uh, I'm an ex-con. He's a cop. I don't want to tarnish his, uh, his career, you know. Uh, he's probably uh, doing this uh, to make a living for his uh, family, you know. Right. Yeah. So that's that, that, that was, was just there. You go. That was fucked up. It was shocking <laughs> shit out of me. All right.